As with all joint exams, it is important to follow a standard routine, including inspection, palpation, range of motion, strength testing, and special tests. Both of the patient's shoulders must be exposed for the examination, and it is always important to compare the affected shoulder to the unaffected shoulder. With the patient sitting, begin by inspecting the shoulders for evidence of gross abnormalities or deformities, including evidence of trauma, swelling of the AC joint, erythema, warmth, asymmetry between the two sides, and muscle atrophy, especially of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and deltoid muscles. To palpate the shoulder, begin medially at the sternoclavicular joint, noting any pain. Palpate the clavicle laterally to the acromioclavicular joint, which is a soft spot just posterior to the distal end of the clavicle. Move your finger forward over the acromion to palpate the subacromial bursa. Then move anteriorly and laterally to the bicipital groove. If you have difficulty locating it, you can externally rotate the humerus, palpating the anterior superior portion of the humeral head and feel the tendon moving in the groove. Medial to the bicipital groove is the lesser tuberosity. Next, move laterally and superiorly to the greater tuberosity, which is just inferior to the lateral border of the acromion. Finally, palpate the spine of the scapula and the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. When evaluating range of motion, ask the patient to move both of her arms so that you can compare the movements. If her movements are limited by pain, weakness, or tightness, passively assist the movement. You may find it helpful to ask the patient to mimic your own movements. First, have the patient perform forward flexion to 180 degrees. Next, ask her to extend her arms behind her back. Normal extension is to about 40 degrees. With the arms slightly supinated, have the patient abduct her arms. She should be able to lift her arms in a smooth, painless arc from 0 to 180 degrees. Next, the patient lowers her arms to her side, which is adduction to 0 degrees. External rotation can be tested with the arms at the side and the elbows flexed to 90 degrees. Ask the patient to externally rotate her arms. Normal external rotation is to about 45 degrees. You can test internal rotation by asking the patient to bring her hands together from this position. Normal internal rotation is to 55 degrees. External rotation and internal rotation can also be tested with the aptly scratch tests. For external rotation, have the patient reach behind her head. Note that this motion also involves abduction. The patient should be able to reach the superior medial aspect of the opposite scapula, or you can note the vertebral level that she can reach with her index finger. For internal rotation, ask the patient to reach with both hands up her back as far as she can go. She should be able to reach the inferior angle of the opposite scapula, or again, you can note the vertebral level that the patient can reach. For reference, the inferior border of the scapula is at about T7. After range of motion testing, test the patient's strength. Place one hand on the superior aspect of her shoulder and grasp her arm with your other hand. Ask her to bend her elbow and bring her arm forward to test her strength of flexion. Next, have her push back against you to test her strength in extension. All muscle testing should be greater than the five-point scale and compared to the other side. Return to the position of elbow flexion with arms at the side. To test external rotation strength, ask the patient to rotate her arms out against your resistance. This mainly tests infraspinatus, but also teres minor. To gain mechanical advantage, switch the positions of your hands and ask the patient to bring her hands together to the midline. This tests subscapularis. To test the supraspinatus, perform the empty can test or Job's test. Bring the patient's arms into 90 degrees of abduction, then into the scapular plane by moving forward about 30 degrees. Point her thumbs down to the floor as if she's dumping out the contents of some cans. Then ask the patient to push up against your hands. Finally, test the subscapularis with a lift-off test. Move the patient's arm behind her back to waist level with the palm out. Ask her to push her hand away from her body. Special tests of the shoulder are performed last to test the integrity of the rotator cuff, impingement problems, 
problems of the biceps tendon, labral tears, and shoulder instability. With the patient standing, perform the drop arm test for a rotator cuff tear, specifically a supraspinatus tear. Ask the patient to raise her arm to the side as high as possible, and then slowly lower it to 90 degrees. When there is a rotator cuff tear, the patient will not be able to hold her arm at 90 degrees, and it will drop to her side. Impingement tests evaluate the area under the acromioclavicular joint that the rotator cuff muscles traverse through. For nearest sign, stabilize the patient's scapula with one hand, then pronate the affected arm and passively forward flex her arm as high as possible. This pinches the rotator cuff muscles under the coracoacromial arch. A positive test is any pain reported by the patient. The Hawkins test is performed by forward flexing the patient's arm to 90 degrees, bending the elbow, and forcibly internally rotating the humerus. This drives the greater tuberosity under the coracoacromial arch, impinging the supraspinatus tendon. Speed's test is performed by having the patient forward flex her arm against your resistance with the arm supinated. Pain indicates biceps tendon or labral pathology. A more sensitive test for labral tears is O'Brien's test. Forward flex the patient's arm to 90 degrees, adduct it about 20 degrees, and internally rotate it so that her thumb is down. Ask the patient to resist your downward pressure. Next, externally rotate her arm so that her thumb is up, and again ask her to resist your downward pressure. A positive test is pain or painful clicking that the patient experiences when the thumb is down, which is reduced or eliminated when the thumb is up. Next, perform the crank test for labral pathology by abducting the patient's arm in the scapular plane, flexing the elbow, and applying a gentle axial load through the glenohumeral joint while internally and externally rotating the humerus. A positive test is pain catching or painful clicking. The last special tests for the shoulder test for glenohumeral joint stability. The apprehension test can be done with the patient standing or sitting. With one hand stabilizing the patient's scapula, move her arm into 90 degrees of abduction and externally rotate the humerus. A positive test is a look of apprehension on the patient's face. The apprehension test can also be performed with the patient in the supine position and her arm abducted to 90 degrees. Externally rotate the humerus and monitor for a facial expression of apprehension. The relocation test is performed after a positive apprehension test by applying posterior pressure on the proximal humerus and noting the patient's sense of relief. The anterior release test for anterior shoulder instability can be performed with the patient in the same position as for the relocation test. A positive test is the patient's report of pain or a feeling of instability upon release of pressure from the proximal humerus.